Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give a wonderful round of applause to Riku Browning! <laughs> Here, have you had a seat? That's your microphone right there. Welcome. And with him is his daughter, Renee. Welcome, Renee, everyone. Give her a round of applause. Rika, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, it should be turned on, I believe. Is thing turned on? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Hi. I'm uh, sure glad to be here. We're glad you're here. I'm glad to be anywhere. <laughs> Now tell us, you started as a, uh, back before the actual movie, back in 1955, you used to be a diver, a uh, professional diver out in Wakulla, Florida, which is right here, pretty much in <laughs> local to Florida. Uh, tell us about how getting into, uh, how diving kind of led you into the role, uh, starting out with some of the documentaries and stuff that you shot, uh, you know, leading into uh, Wikiwachi and all that. Well, we shot a lot of films by Grantland Rice, in those days, when you go to the theater, you would see a movie, and then at the end of the movie, they would have short subjects. And they did crazy things of divers diving from towers and people swimming underwater, and we'd have underwater picnics, drinking um, underwater, eating underwater, all kind of crazy things. But anyway, at Wakulla Springs, I was a, a lifeguard, and uh, I was working in the summertime with Newt Perry, who was a very good swimmer, and he taught us how to hose breathe. And when I did the Creature movie, I used an air hose to get my air, and I'd have other men as safety people with other air hoses. So when I'd swim in, do the scene, holding my breath, I would stop, and then another safety person would come in, and give me a, more air. And uh, we had a signal where if I went totally limp, that meant I really need air. <laughs> and it worked out very well, and we didn't have any accidents, and uh, I had a lot of good safety people working with me. Um, I find out that in these interviews that you have questions, and I can answer them. It goes a lot faster and a lot smoother, and I'm talking about what you want to hear about. So anybody have any questions? If you do, there's a microphone right here. You're more than welcome to line up and uh, come on up and ask a question. Anybody have one? Oh, I got one right here. What's your name? My name is Ilea. Hi, Ilea. Hi. My question is about Flipper and your creation of Flipper. What was your inspiration and how did that come about and in becoming such the icon that it is right now as well? Okay, Flipper. Uh, I was doing a show, um, I can't remember just what it was, and I came home and the children were sitting down watching television and they were watching Lassie. And I sat there for a few minutes and then I remembered in, when I was a kid, there was a Greek coin where there was a boy riding a dolphin. And I thought, well, why not make a movie about a boy riding a dolphin? <laughs> and so my brother-in-law, who is Jack Cowden, was a radio announcer and he was a pretty good writer. I was a pretty good thinker, but not a very good writer. Anyway, we got together and went down to uh, Lake Weir and spent the whole weekend and a part of the other a part of a week writing a movie and a book called Flipper. And I got a bright idea of going to New York and trying to sell it as a book. I took my last couple of hundred bucks, went to New York, and uh, went to several different publishers. And I got one company that seemed very interested. So I came back home and I never heard from them. Well, I had worked with Ivan Tours doing a show called Sea Hunt in the Bahamas. And I remembered that Ivan might want to do a movie about a boy and a dolphin. So I called him. I said, Ivan, I've got a company in New York that's writing a book about my uh, dolphin story called Flipper. I said, would you mind saying that you would consider it as a movie? He said, yeah, okay. He said, send me a copy. So I did, and uh, I called the company in New York and said, I've got a producer in Hollywood that's thinking of making this into a movie, hoping that that would get them to say, oh, we'll, we'll put the book out. 
but they didn't. <laughs> but I did hear from Ivan. He said, listen, he said, I got your story. I didn't read it. He said, but my wife did. She loved it. And then she made me read it. I loved it. Let's make a movie. So he got money from MGM, and we made the first flipper <coughs> feature, then later four years of television, and then a third uh, flipper uh, feature. So that's how Flipper came about. Awesome. What was it like seeing your story come to life on the motion picture? You know, seeing the story that you had created with, uh, and having Ivan take it. What what roles did you kind of have in the creation process as well? Uh, what? Uh, 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 mm. Oh, we we were looking for a dolphin uh, to play Flipper, and we went to all the various aquariums and said you have any dolphins that we might be able to use as Flipper? And they thought we were nuts. <laughs> they didn't have anybody in those days that ever swam with a dolphin. They would work with a dolphin topside. They would feed them fish and make them do tricks, jumping through hoops and all different other things. And so we were driving down to, to the Keys in Florida, and we saw a sign where a guy said he had a dolphin. So we went in and asked him about it. And he said, yeah, he says, I have a dolphin over here in this little pond, its name is Mitzi. And he says, the reason I have her is because when I catch wild dolphins to sell to aquariums, he says, I can take them in there and they see her eating and they start eating faster. So he says, I'm able to get the other wild dolphins to do things that they wouldn't do that fast. So he said, go over and take a look at her. So we went over there, there was a small dock, and I waded in the water about waist deep, and all of a sudden this dolphin swam around my back and stuck its head right up under my arm. And Ivan was up on the dock, and I said, Ivan, we got Flipper. So I spent the next three months uh, training the dolphin with my son, uh, to do the various things that we needed for the movie. Well, I had never trained a dolphin before, so I had to learn with the dolphin. And I trained it to, to retrieve like a tennis ball or a rag or anything. And we'd throw things in the water, it would sink to the bottom, and they would retrieve that. But we still didn't have anything do, to do with a boy riding a dolphin. So I got a bright idea, I said, Ricky, he was wearing a pair of cut-off jeans. I said, would you mind jumping in the water when I throw a ball, and let's see if the dolphin will retrieve you. So sure enough, I threw the ball across the lake so it wouldn't hit the water. He jumped in the water. The dolphin swam over and tried to bring him to me. And she would grab a loop in his little cut-off jeans and try to pull him. Well, he accidentally stuck his hand up and her dorsal fin ran right on his hand, and she swam him, swam him all the way to me, holding her fin. I said, hey, that's great. I said, you go on the other side of the pond, I'm gonna fake throwing the ball. When I throw the ball, it goes over your head, you jump in the water, and hold on to her fin and see if she ride you. Sure enough, I threw the ball over his head, he jumped in the water, made a splash, she went up to him, took her fin, and rode him all the way to me. So I called Ivan long distance and said, we got Flipper and we let's make the movie. And so we spent the next three months training her doing the rest of the tricks. And that's how we trained her. That's amazing. Uh, you have a question right here? What's your name? Hi, I'm Jimmy. Nice to meet you. Um, pleasure, it's an honor, you're a legend, sir. So thank you so much uh, for coming here. Um, I wanted to know, have you seen The Shape of Water and what are your thoughts on, on it, if you have? Have you seen The, the Shape of Water? Uh, I saw the movie, I mean, uh, film, and uh, I thought it was very well done and very well directed. But I didn't like the ending. Uh, I became friends with the director and his secretary, who I'm now working with on other projects. Uh, he loved the Flipper movie, I mean, the uh, creature movie, and, but he didn't like the way the creature ended. I said, well, I didn't like the way your show ended. <laughs> he laughed. 
And um, anyway, we're still communicating with each other. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what is, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, working on the movie, the first movie of the creature uh, of the Black Lagoon? What was like to uh, swim in that in that giant costume? How long did it take you to get <laughs> into costume? The creature suit, uh, they made it so that I would put my arms in and my legs in like a one piece suit. They would zip up the back, snap it closed, put the feet on separate, the hands on separate, and the head on separate. And uh, it would take me about five, ten minutes to get in and out of the suit. Um, we shot in the winter time, and we shot at Wakala Springs, mostly some at Silver Springs. The water temperature was 71 degrees, and the air temperature at that time of the year was 49. So it was pretty cold. And when I come out of the water, I would get pretty chilly before we'd go back in to do another scene and we rehearse it. Well, part of the crew felt sorry for me. So I'm sitting there freezing, and they'd give me a little shot of brandy. <laughs> well, each crew member didn't know the other crew member <laughs> gave me a shot of brandy. So after about seven of them, they had a drunk creature. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the creature suit was easy to get in and easy to get out of. And uh, a funny story, I was, I had to go to shore to go to the bathroom. And um, they usually put me in a little rowboat and row me in. I said, no, I'll just swim to shore. So I had the head off and the hands off. And I swam over to the dock to climb out of the water. Well, there was a lady there with a little girl. And as I climbed out of the water, she saw the rest of the suit. Scared the little girl as she ran away. The woman came over and says, don't you ever share my children again. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, did you ever play, uh, made me think of this, did you ever play any pranks uh, while you were on set? Any sort of like uh, scaring anybody else uh, intentionally by chance while on set? No, not really. Yeah. It, was, it was hard work, it was cold. And so we just work, work, work. <laughs> oh, I had to wear lead weights. Uh, the suit was made of rubber, and I had a chest plate of lead and thigh pads of lead and lead around my an ankle. So I would sink uh, in the water. But once I was underwater, it was neutrally buoyant, and so I was easy to maneuver. But when I came out of the water, the suit was heavy because it was wet and, and absorbed water, and the lead weights, so it was pretty heavy when I came out. And uh, I had to sit down a lot. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah, right here. Um, so I know that there were two actors that played Creature because the on land and you were underwater. Were there any of the scenes that you did out, out of the water that ended up in any of the final films? Did you do no, I didn't. I was the underwater creature. Uh, I did all the underwater in all three films. They had different people playing the topside creature. And the reason being, I was about, at that time, I'm five eleven and a half now, but then I was about six feet. But I shrink as I get older, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they were, these, the uh, topside guys were at least six foot four, six foot five. And Ben Chapman was the first creature in the first uh, creature movie. Tom Hennessy was the uh, topside creature in the second movie. And Don McGowan was a topside creature, of course, in the final movie. So we made three, and uh, it was a lot of fun making them. Did you communicate with them so that like, uh, the body language of the creature is consistent? Both Not really. Um, the way this creature swam is the way I normally swim, so I didn't have to learn anything, and that uh, I just I just swam normally. We were filming at the same time. In other words, 
they, I was swimming in the underwater at Wakala Springs, and they were swimming, filming the top side sequences in LA on the back lot, uh, all the top side sequences. And we would communicate by phone at two match, going left to right or right to left or whatever. But it worked out very well, and uh, uh, we didn't have any problems. Thank you. Awesome. Now, uh, later on in your career, you started working in more directing side of it. Uh, you started doing a few different uh, movies, and, and you worked on Caddyshack, uh, doing some thing, uh, doing directing for uh, marine uh, aquatic type of events and stuff. Uh, you also worked on, what was it, James Bond, I think, a yeah. James Bond movie and stuff. What was it like uh, stepping into a role as a director? How, how did that transition kind of make you, you know, how, how was that for you? Um, directing is, is the same underwater as it is topside. The only difference is you're in a different element, but you, you, you shoot the camera the same way and you shoot the shots the same way. They do it a little differently today because they're using two or three cameras at the same time. Whereas when we were shooting, we used actually one camera and you would change positions with the camera. It would take a little longer to do a film. Yeah. Um, Caddyshack was a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, the crew uh, were all great people and the cast, they were a little bit on the, uh, I don't want to say it. We're high. high side. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we were shooting on a, on a, in a big boat, and it was called a striker. And uh, I was doing the, scene, the second unit scenes of the boats jumping, the people jumping out of the water, the boat getting run over, the people getting knocked off a dock, dropping an anchor in a little rowboat. But anyway, all this was going on, the, the first unit crew, I got a cast, was down inside of the boat. So I'd get ready to shoot and I'd open it up and smoke would come out. And I said, hey guys, listen, and we're getting ready. He said, James, close the door, do your thing, and when it's over, let us go. And so uh, I had a lot of fun shooting the second unit. <laughs> One of the funniest ones was I had a scene where a golf ball is supposed to hit a bird and knock it off a, a tree. And so we're getting ready to shoot it and uh, we had a tame, big tame crow and he sat on the limb. Well the prop guy had a little tube with ping pong balls and he would blow the ping pong balls. Supposedly one would hit him and knock him off the the limb. Well, the ping ball ball, ping bong, ping pong balls, <laughs> he shot the first one and it stuck right on the end of the bird's nose. <laughs> and the bird turned and walked away. <laughs> and so at the end of the, the shooting every day, we'd go watch our dailies, of the stuff that was shot like a couple of days before. Well, we were in there watching dailies, and they saw the scene where the ball stuck on his toes, and he walked away. And the first unit director, he says, how did you do that? I said, it wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun that show. We did explosions on a golf course, and uh, it sounded like uh, the prop guy put a little bit too much explosion so we just about blew that place up. <laughs> uh, Thunderball was a great film to work on. The reason I liked it most is I did all the underwater sequences for it and I didn't have a budget. They just said do it and so I could spend all the money I needed to spend. So I spent a lot of time shooting it. And we had underwater scenes where they were fighting um, uh, each other. And I had 40 good guys and 40 bad guys. And that's a lot of people to use underwater. And we had directed on top of the water in a barge, then go down underwater, do the sequence, and if it went well, we had it made. 
But if it didn't, we come back out, re-rehearse it, go back down, and do it again. Uh, Jordan Klein, who lives in Ocala, Florida, made all of the props for the show and all of the vehicles that we used in the show. He did an excellent job. Uh, oh, we had a lot of sharks we used, and we learned how to use sharks a different way. The re meaning is there are several kinds of sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks, uh, uh, bull sharks, and so on. Well, we found out with, with tiger sharks, if you let them go and aim them in some direction, they would pretty well swim in a straight line. But the bull shark and the lemon shark would turn quickly back towards you, and we didn't like that. <laughs> so we started using tiger sharks. And we had a boat that had a well on the back of it. They'd catch the tiger sharks and uh, bring them in the back of the well, close the well, unhook them from the uh, hook that was in their mouth, and put a rope on their tail with a long line with a loop at the end of it. So we catch the sharks, bring them in, and we had a cage built about the half, the si half the size of a football field. And it was about 30 feet deep. And we released the sharks inside of that pen. And they would swim around, and of course they have a rope on their tail and a loop at the end of it. And then when we were getting ready to use one of the sharks, we take a hook and put it through the loop and the shark would finally couldn't swim, he would sink to the bottom. And when a shark can't swim, he can't breathe because he has to have water going through his gills. And then let him settle down to the bottom. And then two guys would come in to his uh, side fins and his pectoral fin, and one guy on his tail. And if he got real frisky, they'd just back off. And pretty soon he would slow down because he couldn't breathe. They'd go in, they'd pick him up, take the rope off his tail, they'd walk him out of the cage, and we'd either tow them with a boat to wherever the set was we were shooting, or the set was brought right in front of the cage. And we would shoot the scene with the shark. <coughs> then we'd have other divers up high, and when the shark would go through the scene and it was over, they would swim down and try to recapture him. And sometimes they recaptured him, and sometimes he just went bye-bye. <laughs> and uh, we used a lot of sharks, and, uh, but it worked out very well. I'm just glad it wasn't your son that you threw out and then had him try and get the shark to <laughs> bring him back. <laughs> um, now, when you worked on James Bond, did you, uh, what, what kind of role was that with James Bond? Like, did, what kind of stunts did you work on in that movie? And James Bond, yeah. Uh, with Sean Connery. Uh, Sean Connery in the first film, Thunderball. Oh, the underwater director. Okay, perfect. Yeah, part of... He didn't understand that you were the underwater director. I was. Yeah, that was my, my, my bad. No, I directed the underwater sequences. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, but Sean Connery, in the first film, he wasn't a very good diver. He could dive, but not a very good one. But in the second film, Never Say Never Again, he was an excellent diver and did a lot of his own work. And he was easy to work with, he's very professional, and when you're ready to use him, you better be ready to use him, because he gets very impatient. <laughs> Somebody has a question. Oh yeah, come on up. So a uh, huge fan, same thing been with uh, Sean Connery. There's the scene in the movie where he swims through the tunnel with the sharks. Did you guys actually let him do that stunt? Um, Yes, but we had a piece of plexiglass oh. <laughs> and the shark would swim on the other side of the plexiglass. Bond was on the inside of the plexiglass. But we made a big mistake. As the shark swam by and in front, he put his hand up like this on the plexiglass. And you could tell it was there, but if you didn't watch too closely, you didn't know it. <laughs> Awesome. If anybody else has questions, you're more than welcome to come on up and uh, run to the microphone. What's your name, bud? Sterling. I actually met you at uh, Spring Fest a few, few weeks back. Um, 
I wanted to ask, do you by any chance know where any of the original creature costumes are from all three movies, from the humanoid creature from the third movie to your original that you used back in the 50s? Do you know where the costumes are from the three movies? Where they are? Yeah, the suits. The creature's costumes, it was kind of like your tires on your car. If you don't use them, they rubber rot away. Well, the creature suits all rotted away. However, I, I got a, this was years after the Creature movie was over, I got a letter from a company in New York that was having an auction and they were selling a Creature head. And uh, I thought, well, I don't know, they want to know if I would sign a paper to say it was my Creature head. Well, I said, well, I don't really know, but I'll sign it. So I signed it. They sent me 500 bucks. <laughs> in the meantime, they had contacted a guy in California who knows all about the creature movies and, and all about the, 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 the props that were used and everything. And they asked him, his name was James Byrne, I believe. They asked him if that was really a creature head you know, from the movie. And he identified it and said, yes, it was. So they put it up for auction. And it looked, what it looked like was like this little boy here in the creature suit. It looked like it was a melted creature head. And it was very weird looking. But they sold it at auction for 80,000 bucks. Oh, and I only got 500. <laughs> awesome. Do we have anybody else that was, uh, yes, right here. What's your name? Frank. Thank you for being here. Uh, my question is, while you were filming the creature movies, was there any uh, incidents with, say, uh, like alligators or, or water moccasins or even turtles during uh, the film? Uh, animals in the film when we shot creature? Uh, now and then, when we're shooting in Wakala Springs, an alligator would come into the scene. And uh, but we'd spook it, and it would just take off. But uh, we didn't have any problems with them. And I think with alligators, the only one you have to worry about is the female when she's nesting. Mm -hmm. And if you go fool with her, she's gonna get you. <laughs> but other than that, they pretty well run away from you. Oh, we had a funny story in the second movie. Uh, we were shooting in Marineland Studios in St. Augustine, Florida. And we had an anchor in the bottom of the tank that we were shooting in. And they had all kind of fish swimming, sharks, everything. And I would go down and sit on the anchor and breathe from an air hose, waiting for the rest of the crew to come in. And we'd do the scene, whatever was rehearsed. And I'm sitting on this anchor and I feel a tug at my foot. And I, I couldn't see very well because that was one of the hardest parts of the suit was my vision. And I looked down and there was this loggerhead turtle. He grabbed a hold of the heel of my foot, not my foot, but the creature's foot, and tore it off and swam away with it. <laughs> well, it just so happened it was the last pair of feet that they had. So the crew had to swim, catch the turtle, get the thing out of his mouth, get me out of the water, take the foot off, dry it, glue it back together so I could use it again. Because it was the last pair we had. Thank you, uh, You were inducted in 2012 uh, to the Florida, um, I was gonna say Department of Agriculture, but it's not, it's Cultural Affairs. Yeah. Uh, what, what was that like what, for you, uh, being inducted in, in that? That's a huge accomplishment. I, I liked it, yeah. but the <laughs> problem was I, I didn't go to get it. I had a show in California, and I had a commitment I had to go to. So my daughter, sitting right here, she went and received it for me. And uh, it's up on the wall in uh, Tallahassee. Uh, Tallahassee. Tallahassee. I have never seen it yet. I have to go one of these days. But I got to meet Bobby Bowden, who was his favorite coach in the whole wide world. Bobby Bowden, the coach of the Miami Dolphins. So I got my picture taken with him and sent <laughs> yeah. it to him. <laughs> 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 okay.
but you uh, missed that you were not there. <laughs> uh, yes, right here, right here. Did you have any input in the creation of the creature costume? Um, how was that process like of creating that, that whole costume? Uh, not really. Um, uh, funny story is uh, the uh, people that were making the creature, Bud Westmore was the head of the makeup department at Universal. So he got credit for the whole ball of wax, but he wasn't really the one that developed the suit. A guy named Jack Kevan and Chris Mueller developed the, the suit that we really wore. While they were making the suit, I had to put on a leotard, and they were gonna glue the suit together on, on my body. They had a chest plate and thigh pads and so forth. So we were standing there and they took this big hunk of leather and they put it on my chest, glued it to the leotard, and they went to get some more to put on my other parts of my body. And it got hot and the glue was setting up and it was getting hot. And I said, Jack, this is, this is getting hot. And he said, oh, it'll be all right. It's gonna set up in a minute. And they went to work. I said, Jack, it's getting hot. And I said, you got to take it off. And so they did, they took it off. And I got the leotard off and I got a scar from the burn I got from the, the glue setting up. And I still have the scar. But uh, the, from then on, they made a body cast and they made the suit against the body cast instead of my body. <laughs> the first suit they made, uh, we took it in the back lot at Universal in a tank and tested it, and nobody liked it. It looked more like an eel than it did a, a monster. And so they scrapped it. The only thing they had, they tested Judy Adams in her white bathing suit, and that's the only thing they liked. And so I don't blame them. But anyway, they then milled the second suit, and that's the one we wound up with and used in the film. Uh, you became a uh, president later in a, uh, with Ian Torres, I believe is his name? Ivan Torres, I apologize. Ivan Torres, um, you worked with him and then became into uh, Ivan Torres' film industry. You were elected president later on. What was that like? Well, I was selected as president of Ivan Torres Studios. Uh, this was after years of working with Ivan on Sea Hot and many other films around the world under the sea. And, so forth. And uh, uh, George Stevens was the, was the president of Ivatora Studios, and he had to leave. And I, at that time, I was vice president of Ivatora Studios, so I became president of Ivatora Studios. And that was for several years. Hot Stuff. That was a, that's a fun movie to make. Oh, uh, such a Dom DeLuise was uh, his first movie. And uh, I had done a lot of second unit directing. Uh, so they hired me as a second unit director. And Tom didn't really know where to do what. So I just aimed him, you know. And uh, uh, we filmed the film and it was a lot of fun making it. After it was over with, I was at home, I got a phone call on my answering machine, and Dom says, I just want to tell you, I couldn't have made the movie without you, but if anybody asked me, I would tell them I didn't even know you. I'm <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I thought I saw a hand. Uh, what's a, what is another movie that you really enjoyed working on? Uh, we've, we've talked about a few others. Uh, what's, what's one of your favorites, other than the ones we've so far talked about? That you've um, my favorite movie was one I did. Uh, we wrote it, and uh, I directed it, and it was called Salty. It was about a boy and a sea lion. And we made the movie, and it was a lot of fun making it. And I had trained the animal uh, years before we made the film. It lived in my home, and uh, the sea lion lived in your home. My son just left to go in the Marine Corps, and so we put him in his bedroom, <laughs> and the sea lion slept on his bed, and we had a tray underneath the bed, 
and we'd pull the tray out during the night, and the sea lion, why she did it, we don't know, but she'd throw her tail over the side, go to the bathroom in the tray, and put her tail back up on the bed. And uh, so she was a very clean animal. And we had a shower right next to where she was sleeping. So she would get up and go into the shower, and we'd turn the shower on, and uh, let it run over, her, and she loved it. But the f funny part was, she would sit over the drain. So when she's over the drain, the thing would fill up with water. A bedroom would fill up with water. <laughs> Our long hallway would fill up with water. And she would come running out and sliding all the way up into the living room. So we had to watch her when she was taking her shower. We had to do it. My daughter uh, uh, spent well, part of her life training Salty. So uh, she was a tra head trainer on one of our favorite shows we've made. Well, we'd take her to the beach and swim out in the ocean, and uh, she would come back, and uh, she would crawl up and get on your shoulders, and you could walk out of the water, and she's sitting up on your shoulders and you know, go to the car. <laughs> oh, she, we, we, I had a Mustang car and she would sit in my lap and uh, stick her head out the door people thought we were crazy well to keep her happy we'd give her a pacifier so here's a sea lion with her head out the door <laughs> sucking on a pacifier <laughs> and uh, anyway it was a lot of fun making the film but at the time we made the film g-rated films were going down r-rated films were going up so it really didn't do well and it was never released in the United States, but it was released in France, Germany, and all the foreign countries that I still get money from it, from uh, foreign countries, but not from the United States. But it was a lot of fun to make. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so with all your uh, directing, what would you say was your most uh, challenging, challenging scene to film out of all the films that you directed? Um, I think directing-wise, uh, the underwater fight sequence in Thunderball was one of the most difficult ones that I've ever had to work on because we were dealing with so many people at the same time. As an example, we had a, like 40 guys coming down and we were training them more or less. They were from dive schools all over the state of Florida and they were coming down and then some of them would put on too much lead. So as they were coming down, they were dumping the lead. And we were down there with a camera and we had lead coming all the way around us. But anyway, we finally got them leveled off where they worked well, so. Another show that we did in Mexico was called Lucky Lady. It was with, uh, Burt Reynolds, Liza Minnelli, Gene Hackman. And uh, it was a lot of fun to make. It was a funny show. But we found out something, that it was cold, and uh, we were shooting on a beach at night, and the, the actors had to go in the water and get wet before they came out into the scene. And Burt Reynolds and Gene Hackman were just crazy about going in the water. Eisman Nelly just went right in, and right out, she showed them all off. <laughs> a great lady. Uh, your son is currently doing directing in, uh, in different movies currently, right? What, uh, what movies, uh, what, what, uh, working with him whenever you were uh, directing and everything, what was that like working with your son uh, through the different movies? How was that for you to be able to see your son from the beginning of training with you to now where he's at? My son. Yeah. Um, speaking of my son, he's, uh, he was a little boy and he played the part of uh, Sandy underwater in Flipper. And that's kind of how I started training him. And I trained him to use scuba equipment and whatever. 
And now he's on his own, and he's probably done 20 times more things than I've ever done in the film business, and uh, he's still doing it, and uh, I'm very proud of it. Yeah. We have just a few more minutes. Uh, any last questions that you guys have for him? If you do, please come on up. Wonderful, yeah, yeah, yeah come on up. <laughs> um, so with the, in the Creature movies, you were talking about how you would um, get the tubes to be able to breathe. How, how uh, long would you go down to shoot before you ever came back up? Like, what's, what was the longest you stayed underwater? Um, in filming the creature, I would use an air hose. And I would go to underwater, and I'd have an air hose, and I'd breathe from it. And a cameraman, wherever he might be, would give me a signal with his arm that he was ready to shoot. So I would take a lot of deep breaths, dump the air hose, swim into the scene, do a fight scene or whatever we're gonna do, and uh, then I would get another air hose from a different safety person and breathe from it. And we had a signal that if I went totally limp, I really needed air, so they would come in and really give me air quickly. And it worked out very well, we didn't have any accidents. And I had a lot of great safety people that worked with me in the film. Uh, we'd work all day long. Uh, we were working from a barge, and we'd go in the water, out of the water, and rehearse on the barge, either get the scene done or created, or re-rehearse it, go back down and shoot it again. We had a great guy, and the director was, only had one problem, he couldn't swim. So he was in an inner tube, and he had a face mask on, and he would look down at whatever we were doing. And um, the, the cameraman, Scotty Walburn, was very good and he pretty well directed most of the underwater scenes that we were doing underwater. Awesome. Mr. Browning, thank you so much for joining us here at Spooky Empire. It really means a lot to us that you're here. Um, Right before we go, um, we just want to do one thing we call a spooky selfie, where we get everybody in the audience to come up uh, right at the edge of the stage and we take a selfie with them. Are you all right with that? Yeah. Sweet. So we can get everybody to kind of crowd up real quick. We're going to face this way so that we can get ourselves in. Yeah. And then you're going to turn around. Turn around, show everybody your rear end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys head out to the exit.